Well, good Sunday morning. This is Brother Dion coming to you from the sanctuary. We're here at First General Baptist Church of Irving, 1035 Valleywood, Irving, Texas, 75060. I want to welcome you out to our services today. At 1045, we have our United Prayer where we get together and, and ask prayer requests and, and uh, then pray in the United Prayer for those that have been asked for and just want to praise the Lord and have the uh, let people know how blessed we are. Uh, then we have our regular church service at 11 o'clock. We'd love for you to join us. Uh, Brother Carl will be bringing a message today. Uh, and we're just, uh, we'd love to have you out here. Uh, transportation is available. Uh, comment here on this Facebook page or Brother Carl's Facebook page or the church Facebook page or my Facebook page. Uh, we'll get you picked up. We'd love to have you join us here at First General Baptist Church. Uh, I'm really excited about the next two months, two and a half months of, uh, of, of the study we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be studying today the prophecies of Christ's coming and then the fulfillment of those in the New Testament. Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, also, we're going to be next week studying about his early ministry, leading right up till the, the Passion Week on that. Looks like we're having some technical difficulties there. I apologize. Uh, I don't know what happened there, but anyway, uh, we're going to be Easter Sunday morning after our sunrise service. We're going to be having a Sunday school lesson at 10 o'clock, and that's when we're going to be talking about the predictions of his uh, resurrection and all those things. It's, gonna, it's really, really exciting and very interesting, and I hope you join us. Uh, we need to seek him, learn of him. And uh, first of all, we want to be led by him, and we want to be in his will at all times, uh, in our studying and in our worship and praise, and then in our preaching and teaching. Uh, we want to make sure that it's the will of the Father that's getting out what he would have. And uh, I feel really, really comfortable and excited about this study we're going to be having about prophecies, the fulfillment of them. And I, cause the, let me tell you something. It's very important to me, and I hope it is to you, that we understand that because these prophecies have fulfilled, because these things came to be, and all the other prophecies in the Bible have come to be that that are, have come. Uh, I'm not talking about the second coming. I'm talking about the prophecies so far that, that have happened in God's time that uh, all the other ones are too. Yeah. Isn't that exciting to know that, that what he prophesies and what is preached and taught and read in the Bible comes true in all these things. We're really excited about that. And uh, really excited to study it. Uh, I hope you join with us. Uh, if you want to, look on my Facebook page. Every week I'll have the outline for this coming Sunday. You can study ahead if you'd like to read up on it. And, uh, you know, then join us. And if you, if you want to ask a question, uh, you can do it any time. Uh, I, if I, I'll get them, I'll answer them here if I can. If not, I'll message you back with the answer. Uh, like I said, I don't know all the answers, but I do know where to go to find them. Praise God. And it's in his word. So anyway, we're going to, as usual, we're going to start with a prayer this morning. And uh, please, if you have prayer requests, just, just put, put them in. And uh, I, myself, and Brother Carl take them very serious. And uh, I try to pray for them right then. I pray continually throughout the day. But if you have a prayer request, please ask. Uh we need to pray for one another. We need to lift each other up. We need to edify each other. That's what our United Prayer Hit the Church is all about. And uh, it really is a, you know, we're, we're living in a, a fearful time. But it's, it's exciting, too, in seeing the fulfillment of the Bible, knowing that it's true. And, and that's why I want to study this with y'all. I, I want us to understand that but these yeah, prophecies yeah. came true. And... This prophecies all came true because the Bible prophesied them. The Word of God said this was going to happen. So anyway, uh, let's get started with prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come at this time. Lord, thank you for this day and your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for this time we set aside to seek you and learn of you, Lord Father. Lord, we hope that something we say or do will bring glory to you and you alone, Lord Father. Lord, we thank you for the truth and, and the unity we can find in your word, the infallible word of God that we are studying today, Lord Father, knowing, Lord, that these things are true, Lord, that, that we can we can count on these things. When all the things around us may seem to be 
an, an uproar and upsetting and, and really our world seems to be in a place where it, it, that the devil's running control, Lord Father. We ask that we know that you're in control because we study your word and we know the truth that we find in it. We understand the prophecies that are coming true as we live today, Lord Father, just as they did whenever Christ was to be born. We thank you for everything you do. As we study this word, we ask that you would just guide us, direct us, protect us, anoint our lips anew, and let people understand that this is the true and living word of God. We thank you for it. We love you. We praise you. Forgive us where we fail you, for we love you. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank all of you that do. We appreciate you. Like I said, if you have any comments or anything, just put them in the comments. We'll try to address them as we go. Uh, we do thank you for tuning in. We thank you for sharing this. And like I said, if you're watching it later in the week, it doesn't matter whenever you're watching it. If you have a question or a problem or a prayer request, Please just put it down, and we will get to it. And we thank you for those comments. We thank you for everyone that reads our daily scripture, Brother Carl's daily scripture. We thank you all for those that comment on them and share them. And, and we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. What we're going to start with today is the prophecies in the Old Testament of Jesus' coming the first time. Some of them in the New Testament. Because that's what's what we're talking about. Uh, the, the Old Testament is very important to study and learn and seek the guidance of God in it because it's the true word of God. But we want to understand how it applies to our lives, how it applies to, the, to, to Christ, the first coming of Christ. And then, I'm sorry again, we're having technical difficulties today and I don't understand why. But uh, we've got plenty of, of uh, bandwidth and all that. I don't understand. Anyway, we want to stand, understand how it applies to us in our daily lives because if we don't get anything out of it and we don't read it and we don't study it and we don't apply it i don't it's not doing it the word of god isn't the, the the bible isn't doing us any good we have to open this book it can't be just a sunday thing i hope you start every day with a scripture i hope you start every day reading your bible take a few minutes get some quiet time set aside and don't just read it to be reading it study it Get you a good reference Bible. And if you find something in there that you want to know more, find it. I mean, reference it. Go forward. See if somebody else said it. Prove it. It's, it's very important that you understand how true this word is, how infallible this word is. Because then you can base your life on it. Then you can live your life according to it. Once again, if we need to study Show ourselves approved. Read his word. Study his word. You can listen to me. You can listen to Brother Carl. You can you can do all these things. You can watch all the TV shows you want. You can, but until you read the Bible yourself and understand it and, and delve into it and get into the intricacies of it and the following up on it and reading it, I tell you what, when you get in there and start reading and studying the Word of God. It, it just it'll it'll just it'll bless your soul it'll bless your heart you'll know you'll understand and you can apply it and use it there's nothing better I'm honest I'm telling you when you apply it to your life your daily life well those trying to watch live I apologize it keeps uh, freezing up I, I don't understand it but it is what it is uh, if you want to follow now or follow later it'll be it'll be you know it'll be a cohesive whenever it uh whenever it's when we're done with this but we thank you and uh thank you for your patience and uh i'm just going to go delve right into the word of god praise god we're going to start out here with uh would be the seed of a woman it's imperative we understand that christ was born of a woman uh it was he's god on earth uh he had to be born he had to live why did he have to be born because he had to have that blood that precious blood he had to be born of a woman well so it says here this is from genesis we will start there with the 315 and i will put an enemy between thee and thy wo and the woman and between the seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel this was god talking to the serpent after he had lied to, to, to eve and got adam and eve to take the tree of knowledge. He said, I'm going to put an enemy between you. 
That is going to be his son, Jesus Christ. That's the enemy of the devil. Galatians 4, 4. God sent forth his son. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. God's plan had to be true, had to be of him, had to be righteous, had to, Jesus Christ had to be born of a woman, and it had to be under the law. This came true. She, she was married to Joseph, and Joseph understood that she was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And these things had to come true. God made the plan before he ever made the man. Once again, I apologize. The second one we're going to talk about is he's an heir to the throne of David. This is Isaiah 9, 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will shall be no end. And the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from the henceforth for the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. It's going to be son. David was promised that his, his, his family or his lineage would rule on that throne forever. Well, Christ is the one that's going to rule forever. Then we're going to find out he was, the place of birth was prophesied. Micah 5, 2. Bethes, Though thou be a little among the thousands of Judea, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, this to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. We find that in once again, I apologize. I don't understand what's going on with this today. Uh, got plenty of plenty of data by, uh, data length, uh, width. Excuse me, bandwidth, and it's a strong signal. I, I just don't understand. But anyway, now, like I said, the place of birth is imperative. We understand it was prophesied he would come out of be born in Bethlehem in Judea. Where was he born? Bethlehem in Judea. Micah prophesied it. It happened. Then we're going to talk about the time of his birth. Now this is from Daniel. We've, so far we've had Genesis talk about it. Isaiah talk about it. Micah talk about it. Now we're going to have Daniel discussing it. That's how important this is, I think. It's how important that we know who said it, where they said it, why they said it, and when it became true. And why is that? Because we're going to study later after his death, burial, and resurrection about his second coming. And the prophecy we find in the Now, if this is true, and this prophecies are true, true, what makes us think that the next ones aren't? They are. We need to understand that. That when it's prophesied in the Bible and it comes true, why isn't the other ones going to? Well, they are. This goes back to the infallibility of the Word of God. It is infallible. It is inspired from God for men to write this book. And from the first verse to the last verse, every chapter, every verse, every word in between is true. Every prophecy will be fulfilled or has been fulfilled. We need to understand that. Why? That gives us the assurance and the faith to know that what we're studying and what we're told and what we read and what this Holy Spirit discerns for us is true. Then we can take this and apply it in our lives and use it as a means or a way to live a life that will bring glory to God. We need to be obedient. We need to be willing participants. We need to uh, take this, this salvation that we have and, and hang on to it. Die out to that old man daily. Paul says we have to die out daily. That's why it's so imperative that we be baptized to bring forth, the, to let people know that we, that we have a, a, a true understanding of God's ordinances and, the, and that we 
died out to that old person. We're not that person we, weren't, we once were. We have changed. We become a new creature. We're born again. And yes, it's, I believe in born again. The Bible says it. You know, when God was talking, I mean, Christ was talking to, to the, to the uh, Pharisee. And he says, well, how do we enter the womb again? Laughing or doubting him. Said, Christ said, we have to come as a little child. That's where the repentance comes in. We repent of those sins. We have God, godly sorrow for what we've done. Then if we do that and we do our part and we're born again and we believe and we accept and we're in the will of the Father, except Jesus Christ as our Savior, by doing that, we know from the studying and, and, and reading the word of God that he is going to be true to his promises. Our part is to do the will, be obedient, know we're his children, have that indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I know I was talking about the prophecies of Christ, but I want us to apply that to our lives. How does that affect us knowing the prophecies have come true? Because when we know those prophecies have come true and we understand that this is true, it's all true. That's why I don't believe in changing the Word of God. I believe in the King James Version that was written, that was the original translations. If we have the original translation, King James Version, and we have people coming in and trying to change it. Why do you change it if you have the original? Anyway, let's get back to, uh, to the things we're talking about in these prophecies and pertaining to Christ and his, and his original birth on earth. Born of a woman. Born in, uh, he's an heir to David prophesized the place of his birth the city of david bethlehem is prophesized the time of his birth is prophesized and that's here we're not this is daniel 9 25 know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the famine to the restore and to build Jerusalem unto the messiah the prince shall be seven weeks and the three score and two weeks the streets shall be built again and the wall even in troublous troublous times we're going to find the answer to this or the fulfillment of this in Luke, 1, Luke 2, 1 and 2. And it came to pass in those days that they went on to decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrus was governor of Syria. He's going to come to this time, the, the, the time of the census, the time of taxes, because it was a troublesome time. Rome had taken over uh Israel. They had, they, had, they, had, they had conquered Israel. It was troublesome times that he was coming to. We've got to understand too, that's why that's why the Jewish people wanted a battling Messiah. They wanted a, a, a king to come in that was that would fight and, and get them out from under the rule of Romans. They didn't understand that this king, if they just studied the word, if they didn't understand that this king that was coming was greater than just a government greater than just a a person to set them free. He was to set them free from sin forever and ever. That's why man is so short-sighted. You know, we, we don't see the big picture, the end of this story, the, the righteousness through Christ that we can receive where we may go to heaven if our sins are forgiven. We accept him as our savior. We live a life according to his will in our lives. We're obedient children. Man doesn't always see that. But once you get in here and start reading this and understanding it, you'll see the big picture. You'll see salvation through Jesus Christ and him alone. There's no other name. I know I always wind up preaching this at my Sunday school. Uh, I just want you to understand how, how important it is that we seek him and learn of him. Now we're going to talk about he was to be born of a virgin. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a son. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Born of a virgin. That's fulfilled in Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as a 
mother Mary was in spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of be born of a virgin. But she had to be born of a woman. I mean, he had to be born of a woman. He had to have that blood. He had to walk. He had to give us an example. He had to teach. He had to show us the way. Christ is an example. We're called Christians because we're supposed to be Christ-like. How do you be Christ-like? You follow the example given by Christ. You be obedient to the will of the Father just as he was. We're going to talk about all these things coming up next week about his early ministry. Then we're going to get into the ser ser Sermon on the Mount. That's going to take a couple of weeks. But I want us to understand it, follow it, apply it to our lives to make us better Christians. Then it's going to talk about how Herod was going to murder the infants, massacre the infants. We're going to find that in Jer uh, Jeremiah 20, uh, 31, 15. Thus said the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamenting and bitter weeping. Rael weeping for her children, refused to come, come for her children because they were not. Then we find that in Matthew 2.16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wrought and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coasts thereof. The Bible predicted the massacre of the infants. Now, all of you, you scholars study the times. Yes, Herod massacred the children trying to kill Jesus. Now, that's, if you don't want to believe the Bible, go to your history. Go, go study it. You find out he did just exactly that. There was great crying and lamenting over the children at that time. I know it's true because I read the Bible. I know it's true because the Bible said it was going to happen. I know it's true because I read where it happened in the Bible. But all you that, that want to, to to prove the Bible, verify the Bible, go check your history. Herod, it wasn't the Romans that did it. It was Herod the king that did it. He came to his own He came to his own people and they accepted him not. Herod sent out a decree. Okay, you got to understand what happened. The wise men show up. They seek in Christ. Herod calls his counselors and, hey, why didn't you tell me this? Why didn't we know this? And they said, well, there is a sign in the stars and, and all those things. He sent the wise men. And he said, tell me where he's at so I can come and worship him too. God informed the wise men not to return. They went another way. When they left Bethlehem, they went another way. They didn't even go back through Jerusalem. Because first they came to Jerusalem seeking him. And Herod said, he's not here. Uh, you know, if you keep seeking him, uh, when you find him, let me know. I can come and worship him. Herod was going to come and kill him. Well, the wise men left by a different way. They didn't come back through Jerusalem. So this infuriated Herod. He said, okay. He said, I'll kill all the children two years and under. So he, attended, he, start, he started doing that. The angel of the Lord came to Joseph and told him to leave, go to Egypt. And that's where they went. We're going to find out right here. Hosea 11.1. 1. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Christ had to go to Egypt. Joseph had to take him. Fearful for the for the for the for the killing of the infants. So Matthew two fourteen. When he arose he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Why? Because it was prophesied. Today we talked about Born of a woman. Christ had to be born of a woman. He was. He was heir to the throne of David. 
because God had promised David that his he would his lineage would rule forever and ever. He was from David. A lot of people don't want to study the first chapter or the first half of the first chapter of Matthew because he forgot this, forgot this, forgot this. It's under, very important we understand the truth in it. That you can chase that lineage down. That Christ was a descendant of David. It's important you understand that. Why? Well, because if that's true, the rest is true. I believe it because I've read it, studied it, and I know it to be true in my heart. I want you to be that to get to that point in your life that you accept the, the the Bible as it is written. That you don't need another verse, another chapter, another change. That you know it to be true as it is written. The place of his birth. The city of David, Bethlehem, it was prophesied. It came true. The time of his birth, going to be a time of trouble. There was great trouble in Jerusalem and in Judea and Israel because the Romans were so were in charge of it. That's why the, the, the Jewish was looking for a king to be born that would come in with a mighty throne, excuse me, with a mighty sword and take them out of captivity to the Romans. They were paying taxes. Romans were in charge of their, you know, they had to have a governor that would, that would, from from Rome, they thought that God that the new Messiah was going to take him away from that. Then he would he was to be born of a virgin. He wasn't of man; he was of God. We need to understand that. Yes, he had to be born of a woman, but he wasn't conceived by a man. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. Then it was going to upset Herod, the new the, the current king. And he was going to destroy the infant children. He needed that. We need to understand that. Because why? Because it was prophesied. He was going to go to Egypt. He went to Egypt. That's where we're going to finish right now. Is there, Christ is born in Bethlehem of a woman, of a virgin. Uh, he was born the lineage of, of Abraham through David. Because Jesus, I mean, God told Abraham he'd be the father of a great nation, many nations. Then there was the time of his birth, during a troublesome time, he had to be born of a virgin, that they were going to massacre the infants, so he had to flee to Egypt. That's where we're at right now. We're going to talk about next week when he comes back from Egypt, uh, when they were coming up to, again to be taxed and to be senses, how he went and talked to the I'll, I'll get into that next week. I, I appreciate your time this morning. I thank you and I love you. I love the Word of God. I love studying it. I love getting into it. And I hope you do too. I hope you don't just read the Bible. I hope you study the Word. The true and living Word of God. You'll get a blessing out of it. I do every time. I really do. I hope you do too. I hope you get as excited about it as you can. I hope you get that uplifting. The blessings of just reading and knowing there's so much better for us planned. God only has good hopes for us. He sent his only begotten son. He sent the best that he had himself and his son to hang on that cross, to shed that precious blood so that we might have salvation and everlasting life through him. Thank you. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come again. Thank you for your word, Lord Father. We thank you for the infallibility of it, the truth we can find in it today the understanding we can receive through the discernment of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We praise you for your word, for your word. Lord, we hope that we always remain in your will. We ask that you would increase our faith, increase our understanding of your will, and understanding of your word. Lord, we ask you to help our church grow in number and spirit, Lord. Lord, we thank you for Brother Carl. Lord, we thank you for his preaching and the word of God that he, he shares with us every week, Lord, Father. We ask you to be with him and his health and his wife's health, Sister Willene. We ask you to be with Brother Glenn and Sister Betty and their health. Lord, we ask you to be with Lucky and his health. Lord, we just pray for Sister Pauline today. We pray for Steve and, and, and Della, Lord Father. We also pray for Joanne and Sister Sue. Lord, we lift Sister Sue up to you and her family, Lord Father. We ask you to be with Brother Milton and Sister Juanita. Lord, we ask you to be with me and my family. Lord, we ask you to be with, with uh, Donnie Brown. Lord, that with as he goes through this cancer battle, we ask that he would look to you for, for his guidance and his faith, Lord Father. 
Rest be with Ron and Peggy. Just trust their family and their family members. Lord Father, we just thank you for all you do for us every day, Lord Father. We ask you to be with Brother Jeff and Sister um, June and all those, uh, Randy and Sandy Price, Lord Father, and Bella and their family. Lord, we just have so many to pray for. Lord, but Lord, we have so many to be thankful for, so much to be thankful for. Lord, we ask you to be with those people in Ukraine and our nation and our government. Just guide us, protect us, and direct us, Lord, just that we might return to you, might seek you as a nation today, Lord Father. Lord, we ask you to be with your people wherever they're at and wherever they're assembling and wherever they're studying the true word of God. We ask that you would just be with them. Lord, we thank you for all you do. Lord, we ask you to forgive us where we fail you. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of those sins. And we praise you and we thank you. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray today. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, if you're watching this later in the week, and I hope you do, watch it anytime. It's on our Facebook page. It's on the First General Baptist Facebook page. And now, if you're not getting the, the Sunday night and Monday, Wednesday night, remember that's always on Brother Carl's page. Not the church page, but Brother Carl's. Please join us at 11. We'll be uh, having our praise and worship. And then the, the message today brought by Brother Carl. Uh, we once again thank you for everything. We appreciate you. God bless you.